Hello fellas, welcome to another video. This one is going to be on thermal, about thermal putty. I picked this up on AliExpress. Sub Zero Seven Liquid LTP 15 Thermal Pad. Um, I'm gonna put you guys on a tripod. Hello. Um, and uh, we can take a look at this along with the um, this is a GTX 980. Um, you guys remember this? I don't know. <laughs> what the heck were they thinking? Like, there's no HDMI, there's a mini HDMI port as if that was ever going to be the standard in the future. And display port, mini display port, and then one DVI. So I have to use this adapter to make this work. Oh man, lack of foresight, I tell you. But uh, yeah, this is going to be our test subject. Okay, here's the idea before I we'll go on a tri tripod here. Um, basically, uh, we're going to be using our thermal couple here. So we're going to be doing this the hard, hardware way, not the software monitoring because I don't actually... This card doesn't support software memory temperature monitoring. So we have to do this the hardware way. Um, and I think it's probably going to be more um, reliable data, in my opinion. So we're going to be adding a thermal couple here along with Kapton tape. And first, we're going to test this. We're going to set a baseline. Um, the thermal pads that are on here are 0 0.5 millimeter pads. Uh, let's see if this thing can... Uh, you, ah, you probably can't see that there, can you? Well, you will be able to see it once I take this apart. So this is a very tight fitting here, which will be perfect for this. Now, the reason why I bought this and why you would want to maybe have some of this aside is because there will be those cases where you have these odd thermal pad sizes. Like, okay, you have your common ones, uh, 0 0.5, 1 millimeter, 1.5, 2 millimeter, uh, and then you've got a 3, millim 3 millimeter, 4 millim millimeter, and 5, and so on. But there are manufacturers out there that like to use, for example, 1.7 millimeters or um 0 0.7 millimeter pads and you go and apply a 0 0.5 millimeter pad thinking that's what you need and you end up realizing that no it's not making contact and your memory temperatures are skyrocketing or whatever um so this is where this comes in you know with something like this could help you uh you know breach that gap so um another thing another thing before we get started here uh, what I have done, oh boy, this is hard to do with one hand, but that's all I've got. I apologize for my lack, lack of an extra hand. <laughs> um, so what I've done is I've actually transferred uh, some of this stuff onto a syringe here. Because this is, prob this is the best way to, I would say, to uh, apply this. If you want, you can use a spatula. Once you open this up, you can use a spatula to apply it, but um, I think this is more efficient and more, uh, it's, just, it's just easier to do. This is just easier to do with a syringe. Um, you know what, let me see if I can, give me a second here. Okay, we got this thing opened up. Okay. And so when you get this stuff, by the way, this is glass. So yeah. Um, when you get this stuff, it's it's pretty full up to the to the rim here, um, and uh, it doesn't have any like a scent or anything. And it's I liken it to thermal paste, like the like the um, the texture, very much like thermal paste. Um, but I have not tested its performance. Okay. Um, now this stuff does cure. It takes some time to cure. However, before you go in the comments and tell me, oh no, the results were invalid because it did not, you didn't give it time to, to cure. Let me make this very, very clear. This stuff, whether it's cured or not, that the, the, the um, thermal transfer, the, um, its performance does not change, whether it's still in its, um, uh, I don't want to say liquid form, but whether it's cured or not, it's still going to be um, uh, transferring the same amount 
or performing the same way, okay? It doesn't change. Just to be clear, the curing is just for getting hard and it's just, yeah, that's just, that's just what happens with this stuff. So we're going to be taking this apart, but first, let's go ahead and get our thermal couple set up with Kapton tape here, and then we're going to put it in our tester system there. We're going to let it run for about 30 minutes and see what the temperature is on this first memory pad on the back of this memory pad there's a memory chip right there um and uh see what the temperature is we'll record it here make a note of it and then we'll take this apart take the thermal pad out put this on and run the card for another 30 minutes all right let's get to it all right so here's what i ended up doing um i have added a little bit of uh, aluminum tape here to keep this in place. We don't want this moving around while the test is going before or after or during, whatever. Uh, we want to have consistent results. So there you have it. Uh, Thermal couple is pretty tied up against the, uh, the board there itself. This is not going anywhere. So that's why I also added this here as a reinforcement. I don't want this to move. Um, so we're going to throw this in the system there, let it run for 30 minutes and um, yeah, let me get back to you with the uh, baseline temperatures real quick. All right, we've got this installed. So far so good. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the monitor because this thing likes to uh, turn off. It doesn't go to sleep, it just turns off. Let the drivers load. And this is our idle temperature at the moment. Oh, by the way, um, funny story about this card. This is, a, okay, I told you it's a 980 graphics card, but the shroud is a gigabyte shroud. The actual card is made by, I think it's Gain Ward? I don't remember. I had to do this because the shroud, the original shroud that came with the card um, had two broken fans and I just didn't have any other fans. Um, yeah, it says gigabyte, but it's a gigabyte BIOS. This is actually gain ward. Just, just take my word for it. Anyway, um, uh, you know what? With this thing here, we need to restart the system. Let me do that real quick. All right, we're back on the desktop. Um, temperatures are increasing, as you can see. We were at 24, now we're at 28. Um, so what we will do is... Um, what I would like to do is load an application that, um, mm, no, this is going to be too hard on this card. This is not going to run. You know what? Let's go with God of War and we'll just let this thing idle or maybe we'll do some light gaming <laughs> at 1080p with this card. We'll see. Okay, scratch that. God of War is doing a an update. It's downloading it. So we'll run the uh, N-Walker Final Fantasy benchmark here on the loop for 30 minutes. This right here should load our memory pretty nicely here on our, because we want the memory frame buffer to load. So this is a 4 gigabyte frame buffer. So yeah. We want this to load in here. We got the temperatures already going up. Oh, by the way, the thermal pads that are currently there uh, installed, those are fresh pads. Um, I installed them maybe a month ago and this car has been sitting on the shelf. Um, the pads on there are by Arctic Cooling. Uh, the, they're really good pads. Uh, ten, uh, six watts per meter Kelvin or something like that. Blah, blah, blah. I don't fall for that gimmick but anyway um, that's what they are okay so we see the temperatures here going up frame frame buffer looks like it's filled up to the max it's a 4 gigabyte card but 3.5 is really realistically what you can expect um, all right I'll see you guys in about 30 minutes all right guys it's been uh, 30 minutes maximum temperature has been 56 Celsius still going um, 
I made a mistake at first. I was going off of this right here as the VRAM load, but that's the frequency of the memory. So actually, um, we have reached two, um, two gigabytes of usage um, during one of the benchmarks. So that was the, uh, yeah, the max. Anyway, let's go ahead and take this apart and then uh, we'll add the uh, thermal putty and see how that goes. All right, so the card is, um, has been taken apart now. You can see that uh, perfect imprint there, of the thermal paste. Very good contact, in my opinion. Um, this is using Thermal Grizzly Cry, not, not the extreme, but the normal one. The extreme is the red one. Um, <clears throat> but now, you see this funny design that uh, uh, Gain Ward decided to go with, where you have a separate plate for the memory and the VRM cooling and all that stuff. Let's get this fan disconnected here. Um, yeah, this... Okay, whatever. Um, let's put this aside here. All right. And yeah, everything's cooling down. So let's go ahead and take this plate apart so we can get to the memory. All right, so this is what this looks like here. Um, it does look like it had pretty good contact there with the plate, as you can see. Um, this is a block of aluminum. Um, it does have some fins there as you can see on the important areas like the VRM and other components here so I kind of dig that this is this is not like Asus or or Zotac where they fake want to cool your components with you know plates like this that are just mizzling and like pathetic this is actually pretty good I like this you know this is uh, and it's not like thin this is actually pretty thick too so kudos to Gain Ward for this design, I think. It's, yeah, it works. Um, it, but anyway, we're not here for that. Um, so yeah, we got really good contact there with the uh, MOSFETs as well, with our faces. Um, okay, so this is the pad that we're going to be uh, removing. And actually, I'm gonna have to change all of them because, yeah, as you can see there, this is pretty torn, so. Um, and I cannot, um, I cannot do the thermal putty on all of them because that would affect the, uh, results. Uh, so let's go ahead and clean this up and, um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. This all has been, uh, cleaned up. As you can see, let's go ahead and, uh, add this stuff on here. Now I'm going to be doing this with one hand. So just to demonstrate how much I will use. Oh man, this is easier said than done. Okay, got it. There we go. All right, so this is the pad here. Let's go for it. And I'm just gonna add a very generous amount there. Um, that, that right there will, you know what, let's add more. What the heck? Sure. Uh, that right there will spread by the weight of the heat sink here. So, yeah. That's why I like to have this in this arrange. You see? Versus the spatula method because then you have to spread it. And in this case, I would like to just have the spread by the weight. Okay. Okay, so the uh, heat sink is put back together. Let's see how the spread looks. I don't know if you can tell there. Let's see. Come on, focus, you stupid thing. Okay, where is it at? Where are you at? Oh, this is so annoying. Hold on, give me a second, guys. There. Come on. There. So you can see pretty good spread there all over the pad. Okay, so let's um, put this back together completely and see what it looks like as far as temperatures. All right, the card is um, put back together. I had to reapply this because the other one just wouldn't go back on. You know, it's a one-time use type of deal. Um, thermocouple is where it should be. 
There it is, as you can see. Um, let's go ahead and get this installed and look at the numbers. Okay, here's our starting temperature. Idle. And we're booting into Windows. So far so good. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, run this again in the loop for 30 minutes and see what these numbers will look like at the end. All right, I'll see you guys in 30 minutes. All right, guys, we have reached 30 minutes on our test here, and the temperatures have been uh, monitoring the temperatures here and there like every couple of minutes, and they have not gone over 55 degrees. So one degree lower I would say, you know, just a little over one degree better performance versus um, conventional thermal pads. Um, would I recommend this stuff? Uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, it's doing good, even in the uh, most intense scenes of the test. Um, it remains at 55 and it doesn't go over 55, as you guys have seen there. Um, the other test was 50, you know, 56.1, 56.2, around there. Um, so yeah, this stuff is doing pretty well. I am actually uh, surprised. Uh, but then again, you do get better coverage because the stuff spreads even over, around, and around the the IC. So better thermal conductivity, you know, better contact with the heat sink. So I'm not actually surprised. I'm not actually surprised. But um, as far as like performance wise, like thermal conductivity, yeah, this stuff seems to be working pretty good. Um, how long will this remain thermally conducted? Like as long as, long as like, as far as like longevity, that is to be seen. I'm going to keep you guys posted though. I will remember this one here. And if, if I see in the future uh, that this just has not lived up to expectations as far as longevity, I'll let you guys know. Maybe I'll throw it in... Uh, you know, kind of like a side note on another video. But yeah, so far so good. Um, yeah, I would recommend this stuff. You will find this stuff on AliExpress. Um, they sell they sell the stuff in syringes too. So if you want to pick up a syringe, I picked up the biggest that they had, which is the 100 gram, you know, um, little flask. Um, yeah, so that's all I got for now, guys. This is it for the video. Um, I am not that impressed, but at the same time, I am glad that, you know, the stuff is, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, right? Thermally conducted. So yeah, cool. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, if anything, it was entertaining or educational for you. If you found that it was somewhat helpful or you just enjoy the entertainment, please hit like. If you didn't like it for whatever reason, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content coming up. I appreciate every single one of you and all your comments. I'll try to respond to everything that you guys post. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.